Hi friends and welcome to this tutorial for the Toasted Marshmallow Infinity Scarf. I'm Tony of Teal Yarn Crafts and I am so excited to walk you through how I made this fun project. Some of the things that I love about this project are that you take the basics of crochet and some things that you might know already, but you really elevate this into a next level infinity scarf by using some advanced techniques. So this project is made by using foundation stitches instead of chains. It's worked in a spiral instead of joined rounds also worked in a way that is completely seamless and you can barely tell where the project ends and starts. And we'll walk through all of those different techniques together today. Let's start off by talking about our yarn. To make this project, you'll need two skeins of Wool in the Gang's The Gang Collection, and this yarn is called Cuddle Me Softly. This color is stormy gray, and that's what we'll be using today, and the original sample was made in the color Beige Biscotti. I really love this yarn because it's an extra bulky weight, so it works up super fast, but it also has a really great texture and is unlike anything that I've seen at any big box stores. I really have loved all of the projects that Wool in the Gang and Joanne have done together, so if you want to get your hands on this yarn, you can visit your local local Joanne store or visit joanne.com. I've got a link down in the description where you can find it. So you'll need two skeins of this, but if for some reason you can't get your hands on Wool in the Gang's Cuddle Me Softly, which is available as Joanne's, like I mentioned, you can sub it out for just about any Category 6 super bulky weight yarn. So if we look at these yarns together, and this is Woolies Thick and Quick, which you can also find at Joanne, they're very, very similar. If you feel them next to each other, these yarns have about the same weight. So you can make some adjustments um, if you need to if you can't get your hands on this beautiful yarn but if you can do this one this one is better this is one I love the most especially for this project it just feels so good it is uh, machine washable though I would suggest washing it by hand just to maintain the integrity of a project like this but try your best to get your hands on some of Wool and the Gang's um, the gang collection cuddle me softly available exclusively at Joann's stores aside from your yarn you'll also need a crochet hook I went with a 15.75 millimeter um, crochet hook for this project it's another reason that this project works up so quickly um, so you can use this regular boy hook I feel like this is kind of the Q hook 15.75 millimeter hook that most crocheters have in their stash I got one specially made for me and I'll include a link below um, with the maker of this hook so that's what I'll be using for this project um, you will also need a pair of scissors and of course a darning needle to finish this up so if you do happen to get yourself um, two skeins of Wool in the Gang's The Gang Collection Cuddle Me Softly, you might notice that this skein opens up a little bit different. So I'm going to get it out of the ball band here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so when you open this yarn up, you will notice that it has these strings around it. They're usually the same color as the yarn because this yarn is actually in a skein. It is not in a ball like you find most yarns at Joann's and at big box stores. So what you'll want to do is open up your yarn, kind of find those strings and open up your yarn and make sure um, it's on either side of those strings. Just kind of play around and finesse it a little bit to make sure you won't have any knots or any yarn that's going in the wrong direction. So with this yarn, you'll find a knot that looks like this that has four strands of yarn coming out of it. You can either unknot this by hand or you can just snip it, which is usually what I do because why not? I just snip it here. I'll get rid of this. And two lengths of this yarn go to the strand that's worked around the skein. So you'll just want to get rid of that. And then the other two strands are actually part of the entire skein that you've got here. So you'll want to find the knot on the other side as well. This will only have two strings coming out of it. And you'll wanna cut that knot also and take that strand of yarn out of your project. Just pull it up and out of your project to get it out of the way. So find the end of your yarn, and then you're gonna want to very, very carefully ball this up by hand. You can use a ball winder in Swift. I find it much easier and honestly, um, much more therapeutic to ball up the skein like this by hand. So I'm just going to start wrapping this around my hand into a ball and gently allow it to come out of the center and wrap into my ball here. So continue that for both of your skeins of yarn. And when you're done with that, join me back here and we will start on the actual crocheting. 
So my ball is all done here. You'll need two balls of this or all together about 175 yards of super bulky weight yarn to make your toasted marshmallow infinity scarf. So I'm gonna start off making a slip knot. I wanna leave a nice long tail, probably about five or six inches, and we'll talk through later why we leave this tail so long. But make sure you've got a very long tail left here. And we're going to make our slip knot like, a, like we normally do in crochet and insert our hook. To start our foundation stitches, we're going to chain two. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. These are our two chain stitches. And here's how we'll make our first foundation stitch. We'll want to insert our hook into our first chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And that's our first foundation single crochet. To make our next one, we're going to go into the stitch that we just created, but instead of just going under this first loop, which would totally be fine, I like to go under two loops on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is rotate my work towards me, and here's that front loop that you could just go through by itself, but there's also a loop directly below it, right here. And I'm gonna go under both of those loops. So I've got one and two loops here both of those loops. I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. And the reason I go under both of those loops here in my foundation chain is to make it so it has some really good integrity on this stitch, but also to make sure I don't have a whole lot of holes and gaps in the base of my work. I'm gonna insert my hook, and now you can very easily see them. Here's one loop and here's a second. I'm gonna insert my loop my hook through that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Again, find both of those loops right here. Insert your hook under both of those loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. For the Toasted Marshmallow Infinity, you want to make 82 total foundation single crochet stitches. I'm going to be making a much smaller sample, um, so just continue on like this, making your foundation stitches until you have 82. And here's how you'll count them. So I'm just going to drop my hook out. This is the base of the chain that we've been working into. If you rotate the work, this is actually the top, and that's how you'll count your stitches. So you'll count the little V's here to count the number of stitches you've completed. So this is your first stitch, this first little V. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five stitches created so far. Continue on until you have 82. Join me back here for the next step of the Toasted Marshmallow Infinity. So I've made some chains here. Like I said, I'm doing a much smaller version of the Toasted Marshmallow Infinity, but at this point you should have 82 total foundation single crochet stitches. So at this point we want to join our work in the round, and this is what we're going to do. So this is the stitch that I just completed. It's here on my hook. I'm going to grab my work and bring it around so that I don't have any issues joining in the round. I don't have any twisted stitches. Again, I'm going to grab my work. So I've got the wrong side of it facing me here. And now this is the right side. This is my very first stitch that I created. You can tell because it's got that little V right there. And what I'm going to do is insert from back to front underneath both loops of that first stitch onto my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook. And now my project is joined in the round. So I'm ready to work in the round and do a seamless project. So I just joined in my first stitch, and now I want to get into the process of actually doing the stitches for the body of my work. So I'm gonna go into that very same stitch. I'm just gonna kind of pull the knot back so I can see the two loops of that stitch. And I'm gonna work a single crochet in the back loop of that stitch. So here's how you can find it. So each stitch has two loops at the top, a front stitch, a front loop, and a back loop. So this is the front loop, and this is the back loop. For the stitch that we need to work on, you can open up your work a little bit if you need help seeing it, but this is the front loop, and this is the back loop. So I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only. So I'm going to insert my hook under that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through the two loops that are on my hook. So that counts as my first stitch. And if you want to, you can mark that stitch. You don't necessarily need to, but you can put a stitch marker on that to mark your first stitch if you'd like.
And now we're going to single crochet in the back loop only for each stitch around. So this is our next stitch. This is the front loop. This is the back loop. Insert your hook through the back loop only. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert in the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Again, inserting in the back loop of the stitch, yarning over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So this is single crochet in the back loop only. And you're gonna do that for each stitch around. So continue on. I'm gonna continue on to my round and show you what we're going to do when we get back to the first stitch. So here I am very close to the beginning of my round. This is the first stitch that I completed and these are the last two stitches of the round. So I'm going to finish those up. There's one and two. And the stitch that I have right here is the slip stitch that I use to connect the end and the beginning of my round. Now, if I completely skip this slip stitch and work into the first stitch of my round to continue working in the spiral, I'll have a hole right here. And this is one of the tricks that I like to use on any project work in a round in the spiral to close up that space. Instead of going straight into the back loop of this first stitch here, I'm actually going to insert my hook under the top two loops of that slip stitch and I'm also going to insert my hook in the back loop of that first stitch. It'll take a little bit of manipulating because this slip stitch is not very, very wide. And I'm going to basically do a single crochet two together over these two stitches to make sure that there are no holes above that slip stitch. So now I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops, yarn over and pull through two. So you see there's no hole there. It's like that space didn't even exist. And now I'm going to continue working in my spiral to single crochet in the back loop around my work. So single crocheting in the back loop is what gives this scarf its beautiful texture. I think it's something that makes it look store-bought almost because it's got beautiful texture. It's worked with this great yarn. The Wool in the Gang Cuddle Me Softly comes in some fantastic colors. So this will be a great project for craft shows. It's also something that would be awesome as a last minute holiday gift or even just something to make for yourself. On days when I go outside and there's just randomly a foot of snow, if I just need a quick project to finish up so I'll stay warm throughout the day, I could whip up the Toasted Marshmallow Infinity. So you can see we're back kind of towards the end of our work, but since we joined over that slip stitch, it looks like just a plain continuous row, a single crochet here. So I'm gonna continue working in the back loop and that seamless way to join together allows us to work in a spiral without there being um, any seams. So we're gonna continue working in the back loop until we have a total of 11 rows. So I've continued crocheting. If I count from the stitch that I just completed, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. I want the end of my round to be parallel with the knot made from my first stitch of the first round. So I'm going to work single crochets in the back loop until this stitch right here because that's about even with the beginning of my project. So I'm going to do three more single crochets. So here's one, two, and three. Now to end this and make it so it's completely seamless and so nobody will be able to tell what happened, I'm going to place a slip stitch in the back loop of the next stitch here. Then I'm gonna pull my loop up and I'm gonna cut my yarn, leaving myself a nice long tail here. Pull your loop up and out of your work and I'm going to grab a darning needle insert it here, and then I'm going to slip my darning needle through the back loop of the next stitch. And with that, I'm going to weave in that end, and just to kind of give you a quick idea of what this looks like, I'm just gonna kind of stick this end in here. But if you look back on the front, it is basically seamless. You can't even tell um, where this project ended. Now, as a crocheter, of course, you'll be able to tell, you'll be able to see it. But for the mo most part, this is completely seamless and whomever you're gifting it to, or even if you're selling it to someone, they'll have no idea where this project ends. Now, let's finish up the bottom. So I'm just moving my project up here and I've got this bottom loop. If you remember, we left a nice long tail here at the bottom and here's why. I'm going to put that tail onto my darning needle 
and I want to weave that in so it's mostly seamless. So what I'm going to do is insert my darning needle through the back of the last stitch of my first round and I'm going to pull that loop up and tighten it down really well here. And then I'm going to insert my darning needle into the knot that was made at the base of our slip knot. So I'm going to insert that through and pull it through. And this is going to secure that loop. I basically just created another knot. But what you'll notice, again, is that the base is nice and smooth. You can barely tell where the first round started and ended. And again, I'm going to weave in that end, however you like to do that. But again, you have no problems here finishing up your project. It looks mostly seamless. Just pretend this end isn't here. It's not there. There it's gone. <laughs> um, so this project is mostly seamless. So you're going to have a much larger version of this for your toasted marshmallow infinity scarf. I've got some links below with some other, other projects that are available from tlyarncrafts.com for you to practice these techniques. But congratulations, you finished a beautiful project. I'd love to have you share that with me on Instagram and Facebook with the hashtag TLYC makers and also visit TOYC makers the Facebook group and let us know how your project turned out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Again, I'm Tony of TL Yarn Crafts and I'll see you for the next video.